Pin Fusion, there's a bunch of different ways that we can customize the layout and how we're working within Fusion. So I decided that I was going to show everyone the couple of settings that I like to use when I'm working in Fusion and I'm not recording YouTube videos. So let's just jump over to Fusion. So in Fusion, uh, one of the videos that I just recently came out with, there'll be a link in the description if you wanna see more about it, is this toolbar that's going across here and customizing that. So that's one thing that I sometimes like to use. And so if I come over here, I have a motion graphics one that I use uh, quite frequently. And yeah, like I said, I have a whole video going over how to create this. So if you're interested in knowing more about how to make one of these and you can kind of make whatever you want in the video is actually making a 3D one, but you can make it and add in whatever you want. Like I said, link in the description for that. The next one is actually going to be like a two-parter because I have to show you two different aspects because one of the options kind of works with uh, the, the one big setting that I wanna show here. So just by default, let's say I bring in a background and then I decide that I wanna bring in text, right? So a text plus. And then we say we wanna bring in another background and another background and another background. One thing that you'll notice is that we are building from left to right as we add these in, right? And that's very notable because the next option that I like to use is changing this whole layout and having it auto create a node and place it from left to right really isn't going to work once you see uh, how I would typically work. So if we come up here to workspace and then we come down here to layout preset, there is a fusion preset and then we can go into mid flow. That's the one that I typically like to use. As you can see, we have a viewer on the left and then a, another viewer. So viewer one, a viewer two, and then our node flow and then the inspector. And as you can see here, if we just keep adding these in, it's not really working within that vertical um, space. So that really wouldn't work for what we need. So let me uh, delete all of those and I'll show you the option to get it to go vertical. So if we come up here and we right click, we can go into options. And then in options, we have build node flow. Now, I don't know why the dot shows here for vertical for mine right now, but you're just going to switch this to whatever the other one is. If I type in horizontal, it'll build vertical. I don't get it, but we'll go with it. So I add one in and then I add another one in. And as you can see, now we're building vertical. So that is definitely a key thing that you're going to want to have if you start working in this uh, manner. The next thing that I'll kind of showcase here is if we have, let's say, a text node. It's actually any, well, not that, just a normal text node. Any generator, I like to show the thumbnail. So if I type in here something, I kind of can't see what that node looks like until I view it. Well, it would be really cool if there was a thumbnail, as well as if I brought video in, if there was a thumbnail, that would be cool as well. So to have a little thumbnail show up, showcasing what generators are having, not so much like all nodes, but just generators, so you have an idea of where sources are. Uh, if we right click in here, we have two different options that I turn on. I turn on force, source, tiles, and then I also turn on show thumbnails. And now if I was to view this, let's create another one. We can now see, as we type in there, we can kind of see like what is going on in there. So I can tell that that's the purple text. As well as if I come up here to like, let's say, or let's go in and bring this in, and we take a look, we can actually see what that piece of media is, right? So this makes things super easy to see. Uh, and so that, that's, that's like a big thing that I really like. The next one, and this is one that I kind of, I used to use more often, but depending on the size of your uh, node tree, it can, it, it's very hit or miss. It's, it, you like it or you don't like it. And that is how our, all of our pipes are drawn in. So as you can see here, all of the pipes are going the shortest distance to the connector. Uh, we can change this up so, and some people like this aesthetic. Uh, if we right click in here, we go up into options and then we go orthogonal and then we can see that it is drawing um, based off of that grid in the background. So that is an option. Sometimes there are elements that kind of like overlap one another and it doesn't I don't know. So there's, there's sometimes things just don't look 
good and I don't really like it. Uh, for example, if we do, let's say this, right? You have these two going here, but if, you know, let's say we have another one down here and this is connected to that other one, it's kind of hard to tell what's going where, especially if we look right, uh, let's move this out a bit more like this. So right here, there are two different pipes, right? So there's a pipe here and this pipe. So sometimes I don't like how that is, uh, but you might, you might end up liking it and you might, you know, work around that. I guess one little tip here that I tend to use, especially if I have the, uh, the default ones, just having it, you know, go over the shortest uh, distance is I like to use uh, routers. And so to do this, you just hold alter option on the pipe itself, and then it'll create a little router. And then I can like route things around. So if I had like this down here, I can kind of route it around, um, which is kind of doing that, but yeah. So that, that's like one option that you do have as well um, for adding that in. And so I feel like I showed you, oh, there's one other thing that, and this is gonna be hard to show. So let me actually start recording my other monitor so I can show you this, is uh, I also have three monitors. And you know by default you can have the two monitor view, like if we go into, uh, where is it, dual screen, and you can turn that on. That takes some of the tools, like the spline and the uh, keyframes, it puts it on a completely different monitor. Well, you can do that, but you can also get a full screen viewer. I believe this is a studio only option, but it is an option that I personally use. So if I come in and then we go into uh, clean feed, where the heck is it? Uh, video clean feed, and then we can have it go to a different monitor. So we have you know the monitor that we're using, and then it goes to the other monitor. And as you can see, I'll go over to the other monitor. It is just a full screen viewer of that other monitor. So that is an option that you uh, can do as well. And so yeah, those are the five options that I use in Fusion that sometimes I don't set everything back to default when I'm making a tutorial and then people ask questions about it. So now I can point them to this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you guys implement some of these because I know, especially if you do have the studio version, having a full representation of your uh, project and viewing nodes and stuff on that other monitor is, you know, it's, it's definitely, a necessity for sure when you're working on a project. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you want to know more about DaVinci Resolve, I have a whole website with a bunch of different courses on there talking about every aspect of DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Fairlight, color page, all of it that you could think of over there. I also have free titles that you're more than welcome to grab. I do have uh, other stuff on there like transitions, slideshows, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a ton of stuff over there. Just take a look, link in the description for all of that. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Until next one, guys. Peace.